The reading and writing music. Learning objectives. Examine reading and writing music as a language and as historical practice. Imbibe the importance of music in the preservation of its fundamental components in order to read and write music. Exercise the learning outcome of the reading and writing music. Music is a language just like you'd read aloud from a book. The symbols you see on pages of sheet music have been used for hundreds of years. They represent the pitch, speed, and rhythm of the song they convey, as well as the expression and techniques used by a musician to play the piece. Think of the notes as letters, the measures as the words, the phrases as the sentences, and so forth. Learning to read music really does open up a whole new world to explore. Step 1. Learn the basic symbols of notation. Music is made up of a variety of symbols, the most basic of which are the staff, the class, and the notes. All music contains these fundamental components, and to learn how to read and write music, you must familiarize yourself with these basics. Staff The staff consists of five lines and four spaces. Each of those lines and each of those spaces represent a different letter, which in turn represent a note. Those lines and spaces represent notes named A to G, and the note sequence moves alphabetically up the staff. Clef The clefs are the symbols that you find right at the start of most written music. There are two kinds of clef, the treble and the bass clef. These symbols tell you how low or high to play the notes. The travel clef has the ornamental letter G line on the staff. It is used for high melody instruments like violin, flute, or saxophone. While the bass clef is the line between on the two bass clef dots in F line on the bass clef staff. And it's also referred to as the F clef. The bass clef is used for low bass instrument like tuba or bassoon. Note Each note is shown by a separate oval. The symbol also tells you how long or short the note is. There are three parts of each note, the note head, the stem, and the flat. The note head indicates what note to play and its duration. The stem can point up above the middle line or down below the middle line, making the notes easier to read. The flag always sits on the right of the stem and also indicates duration. Whether a note head is filled or open shows up the note's value, or how long that note should be held. We start with a closed note head with the stem. That's our quarter note, and gets one beat, an open note head with a stem is a half note, and it gets two beats. An open note that looks like an O without a stem is a whole note, and it gets held for four beats. That's in ties. There are other ways to extend the length of a note. A dot after the note head, for example, adds another half of that note's duration to it. So, a half note with a dot would equal a half note and a quarter note. A quarter note with a dot equals a quarter plus an eighth note. A tie may also be used to extend a note. Two notes tied together should be held as long as the value of both of those notes together. And ties are commonly used to signify held notes that cross measures or bars. Naming The opposite may also happen. We can shorten the amount of time a note should be held. Relative to the quarter note, faster notes are signified with either flags, like this ones discussed above, or with beams between the notes. Each flag halves the value of a note, so a single flag signifies one half of a quarter note. A double flag halves that to one fourth of a quarter note or etc beams do the same while allowing us to read the music 
more clearly and keep the notation less cluttered. As you can see, there's no difference in how you count the 8th and 16th notes above. Step 2. Pick up the beat. To play music, you need to know its meter, the beat you use when dancing, clapping, or tapping your foot along with a song. Time Signature When reading or writing music, the meter is presented similar to a fraction, with a top number and a bottom number. We call this the song's time signature. The top number tells you how many beats to measure. The space or staff in between each vertical line called a bar. The bottom number tells you the note value for a single beat. The pulse your foot taps along while listening. Tempo Tempo tells you how fast or slow a piece is intended to be played and often is shown at the top of a piece of sheet music. A tempo of 60 beats per minute would mean you play 60 of the signified notes every minute or a single note every second. Italian words like largo, allegro, or presto at the top of a sheet music, which signifies common tempos. Musicians use a tool called a metronome to help them keep tempo while practicing a new piece. This is what a metronome looks like, in case you haven't seen one before. Step 3. Play the melody. Scale A scale is made of 8 consecutive notes. For example, the C major scale is composed of C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. The interval between the first note of your C major scale and the last is an example of an octave. Summary Clef These symbols at the start tell you how high or low to play the notes. Note Each note is shown by a separate oval. The symbol also tells you how long or short the note is. Beats Each bar has the same number of beats. Chord more than one note played together makes a chord. Bar. The vertical bar lines split the music into bars. Pitch. Notes higher up the save have a higher pitch. Notes lower down have a lower pitch. Time signature. The numbers tell you about the beats in a bar. Stave. Notes can go on or between these five lines or in separate short lines above or below.